Nobody touch this thing until we know what it is. How beautiful. That would be perfect for my shot. Hey! What did I literally just say? Sorry, I got curious. What the? What's happening? Just grab a baton! Today, class, we will learn about the history of the clocket. Oh, hello there, Rex. Morning, Miss Brown. Anyway, as I was saying, the clocket was an object that fell from the sky like a comet. It crashed right here next to the school. The clocket crashed here? At this very school? Yes, it did, Emily. The police disposed of it after it made a man disappear. We have no idea where he is. Wow, who did it make disappear? Nobody remembers his name. Well, that's the recess bell. Oh, Rex. You need to tell Emily how you feel someday. But how, Ryan? It's impossible. I can't do it. There are ways to tell a girl you like them without actually telling them, you know. How? You can give her a gift? Uh, yeah, totally not obvious. Come on, dude. What is she like? Well, I guess she seems interested in antiques. Great! Simplified then. Get her an antique. Oh. See? The only way to get an antique around here is from Mr. Hinge's antique shop. <laughs> I can't go in there. Nobody dares to. He may be your only chance, dude. Go see him before you go home today. After all, do we really have any actual proof the place is haunted? Okay, fine then. Mr. Hinge's it is. <sighs> totally not haunted. Hello, young boy. Haven't seen a customer in over 20 years. 20 years? Isn't this supposed to be a shop? A shop owned by the scariest man alive. Nobody would enter if an invitation was wrapped around their bones. <sighs> so, what brings you here? I'm just here to buy something. Well, obviously. But what would you want from here, though? Anything, really. Any of this good enough for you? I'm not sure if she... I mean, no thanks. How about this stuff? I can't afford any of this. And lastly... Is that, like, profitable? My own creation. It's terrible, barely runs. Then... No? Well, that's all I got, so thanks for coming. Bye. Wait, Mr. Hinges, you're my only hope. Surely you have something that can- Have a nice life. Wait, Mr. Hinges, please, you really are my only hope. The antique isn't for me, it's for Emily. 
I need to get an antique for her, because I'm too cowardly to tell her to her face that I love her. <coughs> this Emily? You like her? Yes, and the only way I can think of indicating to her how I feel is by getting her a gift. Is everything okay, Mr. Hinges? If you're wanting an impressive girl, none of this junk is gonna win her over. However, there is perhaps one piece of junk that she might like. That, that that's the clocket! The clock that made that man disappear! Yes, that very clock. Wait, you're the one who the clock it made disappear! Mr. Hinges! I thought you'd be younger. I was. Here's the thing, young boy. This beast of a decoration ruined my life. I had a shop that the town adored just as much as I did. The clock it transported me into a dimension where everything is changed to fit your worst fears. My fears? A dusty old antique shop avoided by the town, aging along with me, apparently. Are you mad? If I take this, Emily will be sent to a dimension like that. The clock it has been quiet ever since I came to this filthy dimension. I assume it's broken. I can assure you that it's safe to use. However, if it's not, and that's a big if, help me, please. I would honor you more than you could think. How would I- Are you buying the bricking thing or not? Uh, okay, fine. Diabolical thing to do, Mr. Hinges. Now the boy is mine. What else can I do? Maybe he'll save me from this dimension I lie to myself as calling my home. Or he'll wallow with the misery of the world I can bring him to. A world that will terrorize him as much as this world does to you. He's my only chance to get away from you. Well, Mr. Hinges, thank you for bringing me my next victim. Why are you ticking so much? Are you broken? You better not be broken. I can't give Emily a broken clock. <sighs> here it goes. Hey, Emily! Come over here a second? I'll be back. Hi, Rex. Hi. Um... I got something for you. Really? For me? Yeah, I just popped by the antique shop. Thought you might like it. Oh wow! A clock! This looks old! And still works perfectly! You really went into that haunted house to get this for me? Heh. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Although, is it ticking faster? It is? It's been ticking a lot, but I never noticed it get faster. So, this may be a good time to say that that is actually the clocket. It might! That's the clocket?! To okay? The car can talk? Yes, of course I can talk. It is one of the features of the Eagle 8 car. Wow, um, so, car? My name is Asher. Asher, right, of course. Where are we? This is beginning to seem strange now. Asher, can you please tell us the year? The year is currently 1989. What? How is that possible? What is the matter? We'll explain. Wow. You're fast. Thank you. It is one of the features of the Eagle Eight. Where are we, Rex? I don't know. But you got us here in the first place. I didn't think that the clock it would still work. What is this clock that you speak of? It's the magic object that brought us here. I think it took us to the future. But that was a dinosaur back there. 
And this car is obviously futuristic. It is considered rude to acknowledge a being by their species, human. So that must mean we're in the past, present, and future. Hold tight, we're going up. Up? What do you mean, up? <laughs> you can fly too? Yes. Where are we even going? To my owner, Mr. Hinges. Mr. Hinges? Am I going to see Mr. Hinges? Yes. I was going to pick him up to go to town before you two almost got eaten. He's quite a nice man. You'll like him. Quite a nice man? The antique shop? You go in and see him. He may be able to help you guys. Mr. Hinges? Ah, hello you two. What can I do for you? You're... Mr. Hinges? That's right. Looking for something particular or just browsing? Actually, we need your help. You see, we're from another dimension. A different version of Earth. This dimension seems to be a mix of the past, present, and future. Ours is just the normal present time. What? Different dimension? I'm sure this is the present, isn't it? Normal, as you say? Well, of course we have Velociraptors in the present day. No, of course not! We don't know where we are, and we need your help. Okay, well, how can I help you in any way? In our dimension, I bought a clock from here that transported us to this dimension. Maybe you know something about the clock it? I've never seen this before in my life. Certainly not in my shop. Rex, this might be the version of Mr. Hinges before he got his hands on the clock it. You're right, Emily. This is all so confusing. Well, it all sounds quite interesting to me. The clock it is quite a remarkable piece of sorcery, is it not? I think the one thing you are forgetting to mention, Rex, is that the clock it doesn't only transport the holder into a randomly generated dimension, but a dimension created to distress the holder the most. Who is that? And what do you mean? That is Hornet, a very dangerous person. He's just muttering villainy. No, the other Mr. Hinges said something similar. I remember now. <laughs> Every dimension the cunning clock it creates, I come with it to torment the holder. And look at who my new victim is! <laughs> However, while living in poor old Mr. Hinge's dimension you call home, I realize that I don't have to wait for anyone to stumble across the clocket, when I can simply build my own dimensions to hop through and cause destruction. So is there any chance you could give it to me? I'd be very pleased. Never! Well, that didn't make me pleased. Now, the clock it. Oh no, you don't! You must feel awful to have brought Emily into such madness, am I right, Rex? She doesn't deserve to be here any more than you deserve her! SHUT UP! Urgh, you put up a great fight! GIVE ME THE CLOCKET! Never! You'll just torment every dimension you can find. Well, if you won't give it to me willingly, I'll just have to take it forcefully. Ah! Ah, you slaps the here, what can you possibly do to me? I knew something was going on in here. Asher, look what you've done! Oh, I'm sorry. I should have come through the front door. Yes, we did it! Woo! Sorry to ruin the excitement, but I am detecting a large life form coming our way. Like what? Look out! Ah! No! The clocket! Without the clocket, we have no way of getting back home. What do we do now? The clocket was a one-time find. We can't just go out and get another one. Wait, go out and get another one. You're seriously considering that option? Yes, I'm sure Walmart has a wide selection of time objects in the aisle titled, Seruman's Toys. No, no, I don't mean that exactly. Mr. Hinges, Asher said you were about to go out to town, right? Well, yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Because the you from our dimension found the clocket when he went out to town. There's a slight chance that maybe, just maybe, the clocket will spawn just as it did 22 years ago. It might not fall from the sky again, but it's worth a try. Asher, can you fly us? Certainly. What 
if the clock it doesn't spawn? It has to, otherwise we can't get back home. She's right though, if we don't get the clock the Hornet will torment you for the rest of your life, as well as Emily. Well then let's hope we get it back. I am detecting an enemy object coming close to us. <laughs> Hornets after us again. Ah, shoot. You can run, Rex, but you cannot escape me or your eternal demise. How do we lose it? Leave this to me. Be arriving any second now. Go, go! I got it! Yes, Emily! You're amazing! I can't believe we did it! Yeah, we can go home now! Hold on. Wasn't the clock it ticking when it sent us here, Rex? It's not doing that now. So what, we wait until the clock it starts ticking again? I guess. What do we do while we wait then? Hey, you guys coming to the festival? Festival? Yeah, we have one every year. You guys coming along? Uh... Yes, yes, we're going. We are? Oh, yeah. Yes, we are going. Great, see you there then. Oh, and... How much would you be willing to charge for that Flash Eagle 8 of yours? I am not for sale. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Well, there's our solution. We can spend the rest of our time at the festival. Perfect. Am I for sale? No, of course not, you fool. Get in this car and I'll eject you far past the sky. Are you okay? This is all my fault. I bought the clock and gave it to Emily. And now we're here. All because I was... was too shy to tell her myself that... Well, think of it this way. You can have some alone time with Emily now, and perhaps say something that you deep down inside want to say. Hey, that makes me feel even more uncomfortable, shush! What are you doing- Hey, ow! What the? You talk to her, I will do the rest. Oh no, please- Ow! <laughs> no, stop! Stop! Stop it! Oh, hey Rex, hi. You were great out there, today. Hm, thanks. You too. Me? I haven't done anything. I'm the problem. I brought us here. As long as this doesn't get copyrighted like last time. You saved me from being blown away by Hornet. And it was your idea for how to get the clock it back. And sure, you bought the clock in the first place. But you know, now that Hornet's gone and we're getting back home, I can look back and enjoy what we did today. I see what you mean. But aren't you mad at me that I sent us here? Mad that you sent us here to a beautiful romantic Christmas festival? No. No, I'm not. What's happening? Hello? Hornet. Sorry to crash the party, everyone, but I have a grudge to set against two high schoolers, one shopkeeper, and a futuristic tin can. No, not now! You see, I don't particularly like it when one throws me out of a desert shack, and then follows it up by ramming my vehicle through an alleyway! Scatter! Asher! Ah! Rex! Let me go on it! Rex, you are an interesting one. My literal purpose is supposedly to imitate or awaken your fears. The problem I have with you, and only you in the entirety of the time the clock has existed, is that your fears are different. One may have a fear of snakes, spiders, monsters, Sharknado. I thought the movie was alright. What? But you, your greatest fear for some reason is that Emily will not love you the way you love her. 
<laughs> Why fear it when you should wallow in it? <laughs> that girl will never love you! Great plan, Hornet. But maybe if you were a tad bit early. What? So, Hornet, what are you when your victim doesn't need to fear them? I love you too, Rex. Hey guys, good news! The clock is ticking! <gasps> Quick, we have to do this before it activates! I'm actually gonna miss you two. Us too. I wish there was a way we could repay you. Actually, there is a way we can repay you. But in order for that... Asher, could you perhaps come with us? We come with you. What are you doing, Rex? Either way, I think you and Mr. Hinges would end up finding each other. That is, if my plan works. Well, it's your choice, Asher. What do you think? Well, I am curious about your dimension. As it sounds, there are no Eagle 8 cars there. Perhaps I will go, but I hope you are right that I will find Mr. Hinges again. Oh, don't worry. It'll be a first priority. This seems awfully familiar. I can't believe we're home! Oh, this place sure is different to my dimension. Yeah, I think you'll like it here though. You know, Mr. Hinges is still in this dimension. It's just a bit different. Speaking of Mr. Hinges... Oh yes, how are you planning to repay him? What is going on down there? What are you all doing here? And what is this? Mr. Hinges, you built this? I built this? Yes, yes you did. Took him some time but he figured it out. You again. What is this? You asked for help, didn't you? You may not be the exact same Mr. Hinges, but this is the least we can do to repay you. Ah. Uh... Hey, Mr. Hinges! Is there anything else you have in there that could spark interest? I guess you could take a look. Count me in! Thank you. Again, least we could do. And on top of this, enjoy your new best friend! I think you'll get along really well with him! <laughs> 